Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a semi-advanced AI patrol system. Now what I mean by semi-advanced is that it's going to basically have a different patrol route. So in my example it's going to go around the corners of this room. If it sees us it's going to chase us. I won't be setting up the chase in this video, I've already done that. But I will show you how to integrate into it and all that good stuff. It's very simple and basically if it sees us it will chase us. Once it finishes it will go back to the position it was going to. So when I made this previously it just went back to the start this it will continue on its path. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So you can see he's going over there, he started all the way over there, I'll try to get him to go all the way around this patrol to start with. So he started there, he's gone to that corner, he's going all the way over to that corner now. Now he's going all the way over there, so I was just staying out of his way. And now he's going to go all the way over to that final corner there. So now when he comes back around here, I'm going to stand in front of him, so you can see he's going to be coming to this third corner. So he's coming here, if I walk in front of him, he's going to chase us. If I press H, just to hide the player, just to assist, he's then going to go back over to the third patrol point where he was going and continue on his path like so. So this is what we're going to be making today, a simple patrol system in which they also then continue on their path. So let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So our first step is we want to create our AI. Now I already have this done, but it's very simple to do. All you do is you just duplicate the third person character. So select third person character, right click, duplicate, and that's your AI. You can now just delete this code and then change it to be whatever you want. So I already have one, so I'll delete that, open up my AI, which I have here, and like I say, in that, I've just got the chase code, which I set up in a previous tutorial. So open it up, and then you can delete the code you don't want and put in the stuff you do want. So as you can see here, I've got my chase. What we want to do next while we're in here is we want to create a macro. So we're going to be using a macro function to do some of this code of basically setting up where we want the AI to go. So over on the left here, just above variables, we have macros. I'm going to hit the plus macro there, and I'm just going to call this one patrol locations, like so, or whatever you want. Over on the right here, we, you see we have inputs and outputs. I'm going to hit the plus input here, name this one in, and change it to an execution pin at the top there. I'm going to hit the outputs, name this one out, and keep it as an execution pin like that as well. So now we can go in and out of this macro here, like so, when we're in the code. So what we're going to do then is just move this outputs out a little bit like that, and we're going to create four new inputs or basically however many patrol points you have. So I have four different patrol points, so four around the corner, but you set up as many as you want. So if you have five, six, two, whatever, set this up for that. So we're gonna hit the plus new parameter there. I'm gonna call this one patrol location one. And what I'm gonna do is delete the one, have a space, control A, control C, and put the one back. So that's patrol location one. I'm gonna change this to be a Boolean, so it's true or false. We hit the plus parameter again, so new parameter. Now if I hit control V, we see we have patrol location, the space. I can just put two and leave it as a boolean. Hit the plus again, space three. Hit the plus again, space four, like so. So now we have patrol location one, two, three, and four, and they're all booleans. And again, you put this for as many as you want, making sure you keep them as booleans on the inputs tab. And it doesn't matter which order they're in, but obviously one to four makes the most sense. After this, we're going to right click on them in the inputs here. So actually in the event graph, we're going to right click patrol location one, promote to variable. I'll name this patrol location one as well. We're going to plug that into the in there. Do the same for two. Right click, promote to variable, patrol location two, plug it in there. So what we're doing is we're then using this value here to set it as a boolean here as well. So we're going to do that for all of them naming them accordingly like so and obviously moving the outputs out like that and I'll do it for this final one here like so and once you finish that we're then going to connect the final one so for me patrol location 4 into our out execution on our outputs there and this is our macro setup so if we compile we can close the macro and if we just drag and drop it into the event graph here once we find some space just to test it out so drag and drop you can see we now have this patrol locations macro here we can go into it, we can come out of it, and we can set these to be true. So if we tick that, it's going to set our patrol location one boolean here to be true, and the others to be false. So that's what we want. So instead of getting these four booleans each and every time, we're just going to get the macro and set it to be true or false, like so. So we delete that as we don't need it just yet. But that just makes code a lot more efficient for us. What we want to do next, before we actually set up any code, is we want to create our location points, our location values. So let's compile this and actually I'll just organize this a little bit as well. So if I select patrol location one, go to category, I'm going to change it from default and just give it a name of patrol. And if I select patrol location two, hit the arrow, 
select patrol like that. This just puts it in a different category to keep it nice and organized for us. So we know what all the variables do. So we can then have this patrol category there. So like I say, we're now gonna set up the locations. So like I said, I want to have four, so I'm gonna set those up now. So I'm gonna hit the plus variable, call this location one. So obviously we have patrol location one there. You can name it, give it a similar name. So patrol location vector or the other ones you don't need to have patrol location one, but obviously this is gonna be different. I'm gonna change it from a Boolean to a vector as this is a location. I'm gonna compile and like I say, we're gonna create four of these. So I'm gonna hit the plus variable again, location two. Or I say four, this is just however many different locations you want the AI to patrol to. So I've got one, two, three, and four, keeping these all as vectors. Compile and save that. Now to get the actual vector values for this, all we're gonna do is just minimize this a little bit like so, so we can still see it. And we're gonna drag and drop a reference to our AI in here like so. So let me just delete that. And then I'm gonna drag and drop the AI in here. And I'm just gonna move it to my first patrol location. So I want that to be in this corner. So I want it to go here first. I'm just gonna get its location. So we can see its location here. If we right click, copy that. And then if we select location one in our event graph here, which is why we still got it open, we can then right click location one and paste. And now we have this location here in this vector, meaning that it's gonna to go to this location. We'll do the same for all of them. So we then drag this all the way out to our second location where we want it to go next. So I want it to go there. Right click location, copy, location two, right click, paste. And there we go. Now we're gonna do this for all of them. It's just a nice, quick, easy way of doing it. Find the exact position we want them to go to. Again, move it, right click, copy, right click, paste, and I'll do it for the final one over here, location four for me, right click, copy, and right click, paste, and I'll just move it to be in a random location in the middle of the screen, or in the middle of the map, sorry, so it then moves to that location, like so. Now I'm gonna reopen our AI blueprint here, and you can see we have our location one, two, three, and four, all set perfectly like so. We compile and save, now we can start setting up the code. So again, in the AI event graph, we're gonna have some empty space down here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add a custom event. I'm just gonna name this patrol, like so. After this, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch, plugging that in there like so. The condition of this is gonna be patrol location one. And also these new locations, we can also categorize to be under our patrol like so, to again, keep it organized. Sorry for just quickly changing the subject there. It's just good to keep it organized like so. So what we're gonna do is check to see if we want to go to our patrol location one. If we do, we'll do that code in a second. If we don't, we'll see if it's patrol location two. So if we just select this branch and patrol location one. We're gonna select it, control C, control V, plug in that branch into the false of the first. And then we'll do this another few times, like so, plugging this under here, or going to the false of the branch above it. Now you see these are all patrol location one, so what we can do is we can just drag and drop patrol location two onto that boolean and it will change it to two. So sorry, not there. Just drag it onto it. You see it says change node to read patrol location two. You see we now have that. Do the same for three and four like so. So now if it's patrol location one, it will do that. If it's not, it will see if it's two. If it's not two, it will check to see if it's three. If it's not three, it will check to see if it's four. So now we know where the AI should be going to. So now we need to actually move them there and then also set these booleans. So off of true for the player location one branch, or the first branch, we're gonna drag and drop our macro. So we're gonna call the macro patrol locations, plugging the in off of that true there. Then we're gonna tick patrol location one as we are going to patrol location one. So also we want to select patrol location one, the actual boolean, and set its default value to be true. So tick it like that. So we're gonna start at the first location. You can set this to whichever one you want, whichever you want them to start at. So it could be three, but I want it to start at one. So again, we're then gonna tick one here as well. So it's setting that to be true as that's where it's going. Out of the out of this, we're going to get an AI move to, as this is what's gonna actually move the AI to that location. The pawn, we're gonna get a reference to self, like so. And the destination is gonna be our location one. So we can just drag and drop location one in there like so and this is gonna move the AI. On success of this, we want to again get patrol locations there. So drag and drop in goes to on success. And then we're gonna tick patrol location two. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna set patrol location one to be false and set patrol location two to be true. So now it knows it's going to the second patrol location. And then also in in, we're gonna connect the true branch for patrol location two. So the second branch, plugging that in, in there. 
meaning it's then if this is true so if it is going to patrol location 2 and it has to restart because it's come from our chase it's then going to go back into the correct patrol location there it will continue on its path and we double click these execution nodes to just reroute them like this to again keep it organized and sorry if i sound like i'm repeating myself it's just kind of a repetitive process obviously it's basically this but just however many times we want so i'll run you through the process still but yeah sorry if it sounds repetitive that's just this process so then again what we can do is we can just duplicate the ai move to plugging that in there to the out and now just changing the location one to location two by again dragging and dropping that on there leaving the reference as self then let's just duplicate the patrol locations macro and ai move to down here again onto the on success of that one this time untucking two and ticking three this location is now going to be three and we're going to drag in this patrol location three branch into the in of this patrol locations macro here so it's going to go to three like so again i'll just reroute this like so and then we'll do this one final time so select these control c control v on success untick three and tick four and change this to location four like so then this branch of true will go into here like that again rerouting it to keep it nice and organized then after this what we want to do is on success we want to again set the patrol locations this time we're going to untick four and tick one again as we're going back to the start and out we're going to call function patrol like so meaning this will then go back to the start see that we're doing patrol location one as we've just set it and go back in here so that's why i'm saying this one doesn't matter too much as we're setting it at the end there so actually i will delete it as well i was mainly using it as a reference just to show you what we're doing but yeah we don't need it we can't delete it so we can move this code further over here like so so now this is the code done if i select all this hit c to comment it i'll just name this patrol like so so now to call this so to actually start it so what we're going to do is off of event begin play up here i'm going to call function patrol now don't worry if you don't have this other code this is just setting up the chase music in a previous tutorial so like i say we're setting up patrol there now to integrate this into our chase it's a very simple thing as well all we need to do is simply just off of this set is chasing to false here after the fade out music as well so basically when the ai stops seeing us we're just going to call the function again so come out of this call function patrol like so and now that will work so when the ai stops chasing us it will start patrolling again and obviously it will check to see where it should patrol to and then go to that location so if we compile save we can test this out and all i simply did was to hide the player as well as i'll show you just in case you want to test this we have simply just got a h keyboard event into a flip-flop of set the actor hidden in game with it as new hidden and not so like i say that should be done so if we minimize we've dragged it in already we can hit play to test this you can see it's gone to location one it's going to two again i'm going to try and make it not see us the first time All right just hide us actually it's gone to two it's now going over to three once it's got to three it's going to four and once it's gone here it should go back to one like so so now if i interrupt it here again so when it's going to two or actually i'll do it here since i did it there last time so when it's going to four from three we'll walk in front of it so let's test that out what's going to happen is it's going to three if we walk in front of it to on its way to four it's then chasing us if we hide it's going to stop and it's going to continue going to four and continue on its path like so so that works perfectly so i think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we want to do We've set up an AI which will patrol around our building or wherever we've set and if we interrupt it so we stop it on a chase scene it will then continue on its path after it stops chasing us and it will continue going where it was before and won't go back to the start. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.